This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Saturday, November 8th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Bunko Forgery Division. The boss is Captain Frank Beeson. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. A suspect who claimed to be a forest ranger had been stopped for a traffic violation. He had a number of personal checks and credit cards in his possession. None of the items bore his name. Since it was Saturday, all state and federal agencies were closed. It was going to be difficult checking out the suspect's claim that he was a forest ranger. We notified the FBI and we ran his description through R&I. The suspect said his name was Barney Regal, which coincided with his driver's license and his nameplate. Bill and I were convinced he was lying. We advised him of his rights, which he waived. I realize you people have a job to do and I hope we can get this thing, this mistake cleared up. Officers, I'm supposed to deliver a lecture at the Blue Ridge Mountain Club at one o'clock. Now, that's quite a drive, and I'm going to be late if I'm detained. I'm afraid you're going to miss that lecture, Regal, or whatever your name is. According to our information, you're wanted on four counts of forgery and one count of auto theft up in Northern California, all under the name Barney Regal, all fitting your description. What about it? Well, obviously, officers, your information is incorrect. I don't know anything about it. What about those credit cards, these checks? They a mistake, too? Please, officers, I have a very important lecture to give, and it's vital that I be there. you got a few questions to answer first. I'm important to these groups. It's essential that they know and understand the critical problems of our forests and our natural resources. The Forest Service is responsible for the protection and development of more than 185 million acres of mountains, forests, waterways, and grazing lands, all grouped within 154 national forests and 19 national grasslands. All right now, Regal, how did you become a forest ranger and where? Well, I passed my examination in Charleston, West Virginia, 1960. I was first assigned to Boyd County, Kentucky. You can check it. We intend to. Where have you worked since then? Oh, all over the country. You know, some forests are best managed with selection or partial cutting. Usually older trees are cut first along with the disease and the defective. It's like the weeding of a garden. Young, healthy trees are encouraged by this method. This also opens the forest to stimulate new seedling growth. All right, now hold it, Regal. You sound like a textbook. Save your lecture for later. Let's see if you can come up with some simple answers for a change. I'm going to be late. Where'd you get all these credit cards? All those people are waiting. We've got people checking on the names on those credit cards and checks, and if they're reported stolen or used illegally, you could be in big trouble. Now, you know that. You won't be lecturing for a long time, Regal. Now, lecturing is the most important thing in my life. There's a critical need for a communication between people in all walks of life. And in this way, I make my contribution. It's something worthy being next to nature. It's like communicating with God. Let's try it this way. You seem like an educated man. You sound like you have some moral values. Now, wouldn't it be easier if you tried to clear this up? Maybe we can help you. Maybe you need help, fella. How about it? If you have a problem, we'll try to help. You must understand that I'm a truthful person. After all, didn't I waive my rights? I agreed to be helpful. I'm not yelling for a lawyer or anything like that. No, I trust you. Why don't you trust me? You talk about it, and we'll meet you halfway. Well, this is a beautiful state, officers. I think it's the most beautiful state of any in which I've worked. Your California redwoods are incomparable. Regal. In fact, the natural resources here are superb, and that's why it's absolutely mandatory that we preserve them. The smog problem must be licked. Did you know that smog is actually killing plant life and trees in areas as far away from the city as Lake Arrowhead? You know something, you're glib, Barney, but we're just wasting time here. Now, we'll have to hold you for those Northern California authorities. You're gonna miss that lecture. I can't let those people down. I just can't. Then let's have some cooperation. But I am cooperating. Then tell us about the bad checks on those credit cards. Well, that's all very simple. I'm surprised you don't know. You tell us. Well, it's part of every ranger's job to look out for the welfare of the public as well as the forests and wildlife. We patrol the campsites and the parks regularly. Uh -huh. Well, those credit cards were lost by campers and hunters during the summer. Naturally, I retrieved them, and I'll return them to the companies involved just as soon as my lecture tour is over. I I've been busy. I'll bet you have. You see how simple the solution was? 
It's all a misunderstanding. Now, I realize you fellas have a job to do. It's okay. But I still have time to deliver my talk, so may I go now? It isn't simple, Barney. It gets complicated, especially if you've used any of these cards illegally. Now, if you have, and we have reason to believe so, then it's forgery. But I've told you, I'm going to send them back. Oh, we'll take care of that for you. By the way, what part of the state are you assigned to now? The Forestry Department assigns you, right? You mean the U.S. Forest Service, Officer Gannon. It's not the Forestry Department. Tell us about it. Well, right now, I'm not assigned to any region. I'm on medical leave, so I'm lecturing. Apparently, you're paid pretty well for your lectures. According to our report, you're driving an expensive car. I've saved some money. And yes, I get paid well. Why shouldn't I? My work is important. Now, this 1970 Bonneville, does it belong to you? Oh, Sergeant Friday, I'm not stupid. I know you have the answer to that. The car belongs to my girlfriend. I borrowed it. She's out of town for the weekend. There's nothing wrong with borrowing a friend's car. Now, this Karen Field, is she the girlfriend? That's right, and I know you'll check it out. What happened to the 67 station wagon? Station wagon? Yeah, the one that was reported stolen from that party up in Redwood City, the one that Barney Regal drove away in. <laughs> I honestly don't understand all this. I know nothing about a station wagon. I never owned one, borrowed one, or stole one. Another mistake, right? Of course. You know, there are just too many misunderstandings and too many mistakes involved here, Barney. Now, listen to me. I'm going to level with you. I think you're lying. I don't know anything about the Forest Service. Maybe you are a ranger, but I don't buy any piece of the rest of your story. I'm getting tired of all this. If you don't believe me, I'll just have to stop talking. There's no use going on. Now, if you don't want the truth, then I'm going to stop talking. Friday, Gannon, see you a minute. Captain Beeson informed us that a team checking out the names on the credit cards came up with a sporting goods operator who reported his wallet missing or stolen the night before. It contained one of the cards in Regal's possession. The man claimed the wallet was missing after he had attended a talk given by a representative of the U.S. Forest Service. You know, Joe, for a minute there, I was beginning to wonder whether we had made a mistake. One thing for sure, the guy seems to be an expert on the subject. Or he's got a good encyclopedia and a memory to match. He's more than a kook or a plain wacko. My guess is he's psychotic. I'll agree with that, plus the fact that whatever he is, he's a first-rate con man. Well, maybe this new bit will hit a nerve. Barney, tell us something. Did you give one of your little talks last night? Why, yes, how did you know? Where did you give it? At the Alpine Club in Montrose. Do you know a sporting goods operator by the name of Harold Fletcher? No, I don't think so. That's funny. You've got one of his credit cards here. Why, well, he must have lost it at one of the campsites, right? Wrong. It turned up missing last night after your lecture at the Alpine Club. <laughs> 1 p.m. The suspect still maintained his innocence. This man, Fletcher, he must have had two credit cards with the same company because I found this one up at the ski lodge at Mammoth. That's it. I remember. Then it was just a coincidence that Fletcher was at the Alpine Club last night. Just a coincidence that he lost his wallet with a similar card in it. Well, I know it sounds bad, but I'm telling you the truth. Uh-uh. Too many contradictions, Barney. Look, I, I don't feel well. I, I shouldn't get excited. I have a mild heart condition. I, may I have a glass of water? A bottled water, if you have it? We have it. I'll get it. Do you realize what is happening to our water? I, I mean, the problems of pollution, our rivers, lakes, and streams. We're polluting our water, and one of the biggest dangers is petrochemical pollution. The waste products are being emptied into a great many of our rivers and industrial cities in the east and the midwest. And this, of course, affects the lakes they empty into. These rivers look like septic tanks. There's no dissolved oxygen. They're full of oils and exotic waste materials. Now look, Barney. We're having critical problems with our estuaries where the rivers meet the sea. For example, fish stocks in the Atlantic coastal waters have suffered great losses from water pollution and decay of coastal marshes. Pesticides contribute one of the greatest dangers. They enter streams from treated areas through runoff of rain or through uh, percolation in the soil, also by air currents and living organisms. I, I, I tell you, it's, it's truly terrible. We're wasting time, Barney. Some organic pesticides are especially level. That is, they don't break down into their component parts in water and dissolve. But industry and government are working on it, but the people must get behind it, too. Oh, there are many, many problems. Human and animal waste, synthetic detergents, changing temperatures, floods. You name it. Thank you. How about some answers to your problems, Barney? I've given you the answers. You've just gotten everything confused. Maybe you're confused. You seem to know a lot about conservation and nature, but you can't give us any simple answers on why you're here. Nature. I'm glad you brought that up. Nature is the subject of the next talk on my schedule. Nature, as well as man, poses a natural threat to itself. That's how I opened my nature lecture with that provocative statement. Sure. 
Well, did you know that even rainwater can be a threat to us? Oh, yes. It, too, can be a source of pollution. Rainwater contains small amounts of dissolved minerals known as salts, which are transported by winds blowing across the ocean and land surface. Rainwater also contains dissolved gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, even dust particles. Now, you remember that next time you go out in the rain. And by the way, officers, don't you ever drink rainwater. Oh, we'll try not to. Even the simplest form of plant life, algae, secretes substances or poisons, destroy marine life, and subsequently contaminate water. See you a minute. 2.30 p.m., the evidence was beginning to mount against the suspect. Another team of detectives reported that a Mrs. Robert Hollister, president of the San Bernardino Explorers Club, was missing several credit cards and a diamond ring after officiating over a week-long seminar on conservation at a local mountain resort. Mrs. Hollister at first did not report the loss of the diamond ring, valued at $4,000. She admitted that she had sponsored a series of lectures by Barney Regal. She was also convinced that Regal had absconded with her credit cards and her diamond ring. Well, I suppose you've got more evidence against me. Why are you working me over? I'm no thief. Why don't you spend your time looking for some real hoodlums? I'm an expert in my field, and it certainly isn't in breaking the law. All right, now, Barney, suppose we relax on the seminars for a minute. Just tell us a few things we want to know about you, not nature. When did you meet Mrs. Hollister? Who? Mrs. Robert Hollister. How do you know about her? We've got a report on your activities with the San Bernardino Explorers Club. I gave them the best talk they ever heard. You know, I talked to them for over two hours. Sorry, Barney, we haven't got time to listen. Now, tell us about Mrs. Hollister. She's on a plane. What was? Where I met Mrs. Hollister. I'd just given a talk in Phoenix, and we were discussing the talk. All right, go on. She was so impressed with my knowledge, my work, that she said she'd set up a seminar for me at the Explorers Club. They were having a convention at the lodge she owned. Well, I did it. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? It's the truth. We know it is. You see, you're starting to believe me. I've proved myself, right? Partly. But there's more to it, and you know what we mean. No, I don't understand. This Mrs. Hollister says she's missing several credit cards and a diamond ring. Now, it sort of fits the pattern, doesn't it? I wouldn't know anything about that. Just a mistake, that it? Just a mistake. You're running out of them, Barney. Where's the ring? I don't have any ring. Where do you live? I have no permanent address. I move around the country a lot. You must be staying somewhere while you're no, lecturing. No, no, no. I just got in town. But you say you got a lecture today, and you've had time to see your girlfriend and borrow her car. Now, come on, Barney. You must be staying somewhere. I'm staying at my girl's house. Now, remember, I told you she's out of town. What's the address? OK, OK. I'm staying at a motel. Which motel? I forgot the name of it. Now, come on. You don't expect us to buy that, do you? A man of your obvious intellect doesn't forget something as simple as the name of a motel he's staying at, now does he? That's the Golden Poppy. Where is it located? Out in the valley. I suppose you'll have my room searched. Well, you won't find what you're looking for because I've nothing to hide. And you won't mind if we search it. Now, you think about it, officers. With my reputation and position, would I jeopardize the prestige and integrity of the United States Forest Service? It's a job as important and respected as yours. You know, that's a real good point, and all the more reason to clear this up. From the evidence at hand, Regal, your reputation is spreading, and it isn't favorable. And you're not doing that uniform any good. I don't see how you arrive at that. Come on, all these reports specifically identify Barney Regal as the person suspected of stealing credit cards and the checks in the automobile. Well, then someone's going around using my name, and we've got to stop him. Oh, we will. You know, I don't believe you fellas really understand the situation. But that's OK. Not many people do. You think we foresters just go around minding campsites and looking out for fires. Well, there's a lot more to it than that, I can assure you. We're not getting through to you at all, are we, Regal? To become a forest ranger is no simple task. It takes an individual of skill and responsibility. You know, years ago, all a man had to do was ride a horse and throw a diamond hitch on a pack animal, and he could qualify as a ranger. But this has all changed. Today's forester not only has all the skills of an outdoorsman, but he must be thoroughly trained in business. This is essential if he's to solve the problems such as those related to valuation of timber crops, costs of harvesting, marketing methods. Did you know that foresters interested in research work need a master's or a doctor's degree? We've heard. No, sir, it is no small job. For instance, a ranger's got to decide which areas will be used for timber harvesting, experimental purposes, grazing and recreation. He also surveys and manages the construction of access roads and trails. He plants, thins, and prunes trees. He cruises timber stands to determine their potential yield of lumber. And sometimes he even uses aerial photography to take inventory on timberlands. Then there's the emergencies. A ranger can be called on to work the fire lines or direct rescue operations to aid injured hikers and so on. In fact, many foresters are managers, researchers, consultants, engineers, economists, and even teachers. But not thieves. 
That's pretty clear, isn't it? What's that? A man of this stature couldn't be a thief. You put up a pretty convincing argument, but somehow you're not convincing me. A person could study a lot of textbooks and come up with a fairly knowledgeable line on almost anything, couldn't he, Barney? You're gonna have to furnish more proof of what you are than just an articulate sermon in that uniform. You people are stubborn. You're, you're, you're hopeless. I'm, I'm sorry, officers. I, I'm not well. I'm a little tired and I'm nervous. I'm, I'm sorry. Barney, you're doing this the hard way. Now, just give us a straight story. What really upsets me is that I've missed my lecture. There's no way I can make it up to those good people. How am I going to explain it to them? Well, maybe it's better that you don't, for the good of the Forest Service. You know, that's right. With all the confusion and mistakes involved in this thing, they could get the wrong idea. Let's go over it again. Now, what about the credit cards and the checks? Now, seriously, officers, the only thing I can figure out is that someone else is going around using my name. Now. <laughs> I know that sounds like a grade B movie cliche, but you've got the wrong man. Too many contradictions here, Barney. You know, it's simply a matter of time before we have all the answers. Now, why don't you just tell us about it? You have fingerprints, positive identification, witnesses. Now, surely if these charges were true, you'd have all that. You know the answer to that one, Regal. The warrants on you are recent, and you haven't been caught until now. Barney Regal was taken downstairs and held in the central jail. 4.30 p.m., we received the FBI kickback on the suspect. Coffee, Joe? It's pretty good. Made it myself. No, thanks. Well, this will really make your day. I could use it. What do you got? You ready for this? There is a Barney Regal. I'm not too surprised, but I will be if he's the guy we've got. Well, you're right there. According to this FBI kickback, Barney Regal was a forest ranger, all right, but he died in West Virginia two years ago. Any idea on who our ranger might be? Well, the FBI thinks he could be a fellow named Clifford Ray Owens. Department of Agriculture sending his file out. They have to pull it off microfilm. He applied for a job with the Forest Service. Do they have anything on him through Selective Service? No, they can't seem to find a service record on him. Possibility this guy never registered for the draft. How'd they come up with the name Clifford Ray Owens? A clerk in the West Virginia Civil Service Examiner's Office ran across an old application blank. The clerk also remembered Owens. Says he was a real pest. He wrote him a lot of letters about his qualifications. Got real upset when he failed to pass the physical for the job. Well, maybe we've got enough to get him to cop out now. Excuse me. I'm looking for Sergeant Joe Friday. Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? Well, I hope so. It's about Barney Rigo. Would you like to sit down, please? Thank you. This is my partner, Bill Gannon. Nice to meet you. I'm Karen Fields. How can we help you, Miss Fields? He didn't steal it. Ma'am? My car officers, he didn't steal it. Would you like to tell us about it? Well, I don't know what Barney is here for. I mean, I don't know what he's done. But I want you to know he didn't steal my car. What kind of a car is it? 1970 Bonneville, blue and gray. What made you contact us, ma'am? Well, I let Barney borrow the car late Thursday. I was going to visit my mother in San Diego. Since I was going by train, I let Barney take the car. He was going to pick me up at Union Station this morning, but he never came. Now I know why. Yes, ma'am. Well, actually, I feel sorry for him. But then I don't care to see him anymore. I mean, he's really not my boyfriend, and that's the main thing. He thinks he's my boyfriend. He's too serious. He's too intense for me. I let him borrow my car to go give a talk. At least that's what he claimed he was going to do. I was going to tell him not to come around anymore. But when he didn't pick me up, after a while I called you people. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's it. I was told my car was here and that Barney was here. I hope he's not in any serious trouble. I suppose I care for him in a human way. I feel sorry for him. Yes, ma'am. Barney can be a pitiful person at times. Five fifteen p.m. Bill and I confronted the suspect with the information obtained in the FBI kickback. It's the most incredible coincidence I've ever heard. That information is all wrong. We have it on good authority that your real name is Clifford Ray Owens. What? Who? Clifford Ray Owens. My name is Barney Regal. I took my name tag and badge away down in the jail, but as you can see, I'm alive. You've, you've got a mixed up report. Those records are full of errors. No, they're not, Barney. I came up through the ranks, studied harder than anybody. I did more research than any job requires. I've been all over this country. I know this land like a government surveyor. I know every lake, mountain, stream, and state and public park in existence. We don't question your knowledge, but you didn't earn that uniform. I've given the best part of my life to my work. And this isn't just an idle boast, that's the truth. And I've shared my knowledge with all kinds of groups, from the Cub Scouts to the YMCA, even the Red Cross. 
conservation, mountain safety, pollution, the preservation of wildlife. I've lectured on all this. Sometimes I did it without pay. Most of the times, these groups sought me out on my reputation alone. Yes, on my reputation. Take it easy, Owens. My name isn't Owens. My name's Barney Regal. And the name is known all over California, everywhere. Now, my whole life is at stake here, and you're trying to ruin me. We're not trying to ruin anybody here. We only want the truth. I can remember the little kids visiting the parks, feeding the animals, asking questions about nature's wonders, and those rewarding nature hikes that I've taken youth groups on, and the work that I did in helping to set up and stock the wild animal park just last year. They've shot a lot of movies and TV shows at that compound. The park in Soledad Canyon, is that the one? Yes, yes, of course, that's it. You know of it, right? Well, what'd you say you worked there? Oh, last year in the spring? That would have been a little tough, wouldn't it? Why, what do you mean by that? That wild animal park was destroyed over two years ago by a fire. It didn't make the front page. Maybe you missed reading up on that one. Wiped out the whole place. Some of the animals were killed. Oh, sure, I, I just forgot about it for the moment. Yeah, well, you seem to have forgotten a lot of things for the moment. Now, suppose you start remembering them before you lie yourself in any deeper. Come on, fella, it's time. Shouldn't have done it to me. I had so much to offer them, they shouldn't have done it. Who, Barney? It's not Barney. It's Clifford Ray Owens. Go on, Owens. It was my lifelong dream to be a forester. It's funny, I keep preaching about nature, and it was nature that kept me from my dream. How's that, Owens? In my heart, I got a murmur. I couldn't pass the physical, but it's not real serious. I was in better shape than a lot of men I knew in the service, including my friend Barney Regal. In fact, Barney was the guy who actually prevented me from being hired. He was on the board then. He could have fixed it for me, but he didn't. Well, he died, and I took his badge, uniform, and name. But I've done more for forestry than he ever did. What about the credit cards and checks and the stolen car? I devoted my time solely to the forest service. I was the best spokesman it ever had. Well, it cost quite a bit of money to travel around the country, hotels and everything. I never used one of the credit cards more than a few times. It didn't cost anyone very much money. I always sent the card back to the company after just a couple of days. And the car? I just drove away in it after a talk at Redwood City. Where is it now? It's parked out at International Airport. I was going to send the parking stub to the owner. It's in an envelope at the motel all ready to go. You, you'd have found it. Can't you see everything I did was for somebody else's good? You've caused a lot of people a lot of grief, Owens. No. No one ever gave as much for the country as I have. So I took some credit cards and made a mistake or two. For what I've done for forestry, it was worth it to those people. They really owe me something. I don't owe anybody anything for what I did. You're wrong about that one, Owens. Well, you tell me what? What do I owe? A big apology to the U.S. Forest Service. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On December 29th, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The court found the suspect guilty on four counts of forgery and because of the possible need for psychiatric treatment, ordered the defendant placed in a state diagnostic facility. <laughs> 